Last year, scientists found 51 million year old footprints stuck in the mud. But how do we know they weren't made yesterday by that neighbor kid, though? Howdy folks, Trace here for D News. The ancient footprints that British scientists found are the earliest evidence of human habitation outside of the African continent. They made the discovery last year, and according to a paper just published in PLOS One, in many cases the arch and front and back of the foot can be identified, and in one case the impression of the toes can be seen. This is a huge step in human ancestor research. 50 footprints, guys, that is a lot. When I read this, I thought about the Creation Museum. See. Last Tuesday, during the Ken Ham slash Bill Nye debate on evolution, Ham kept repeating a phrase that you hear a lot in evolution-denying circles. You can't know because you weren't there. But we can, Ken Ham, because other things were there. The discovery of carbon dating earned Willard Libby the 1960 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, because with his new method, we can estimate the ages of any organic thing. Yeah any organic thing. It's all based on carbon-14, a naturally occurring radioactive isotope created when cosmic rays hit the air. It enters the food chain when plants absorb it and then animals eat it. Then it lodges itself in their bodies. As the sun and atmosphere interact constantly, the number of carbon-14 atoms in your body is the same as in every other living thing. It's a constant. Then every 5,730 years, half of it will decay. Using this basic knowledge, we can date bones of mummies and Pompeian victims to an estimated age. Periods of solar and geologic activity, however, could change how much carbon-14 was in a specific sample. So, as scientists are obsessed with corroboration and peer review, they found more data to compare their carbon dating. Looking at the solar, atmospheric, and geologic data from tree rings, coral beds, and ice cores, all together, we can accurately date fossils to about 60,000 years back and have other data to back that up. But how do we get something that's like a million years and older? Well, that's not quite as simple, but it's still possible. Using the same radiometric dating, scientists look at the layers of the Earth, and as you go deeper into the crust, the fossils will have predictable levels of carbon-14. But once you get below where science is confident of the exact year, and there's not enough carbon-14 to check, like 60,000 years or so, they look for other isotopes with longer half-lives, things like uranium-238, uranium-235, and potassium-40. Those are all over in the dirt around fossils, so when they can't use carbon-14, they look at the geologic layer and can determine when that creature died with these other isotopes. Additionally, scientists have studied the evolution of various plants and animals, so when other plants and tracks are found in the same area as a fossil, they can date it from that as well. Thus, there is very little reason for a scientist to question whether a fossil found at a specific depth is a specific age. In this case, these 50 footprints are thought to be from a pre-human, pre-Neanderthal relative called Homo antecessor, or perhaps Homo heidelbergensis. They are close to 800,000 years old and belong to a group of people ranging from children to teenagers. They wore similar shoe sizes to modern humans and stood as tall as five foot six. They're not the oldest footprints ever discovered, not even by a long shot. In Kenya, there are 1.5 million year old prints and in Tanzania, they've found some which are three and a half million years old. It's like a family foot tree. Well, let's, let's not do that, actually. Are you curious about how any other science thing works? Send us a tweet at DNews or leave a comment down below. Maybe we will cover it here on the show. Make sure you subscribe, and thanks a lot for watching.